visited, uh, uh, got, um, uh, decided to visit, uh, come to Uganda and play the British residents of Uganda. And they beat the, the, the home team by five wickets. A gentleman called uh, Mr. Vidal, M.R. Vidal, one of the visitors scored 104 not out. And that is the first recorded century in Uganda. Go to 1918 and the Entebbe Club groundsman, their first groundsman, a guy called Paolo Kivuma, became the first African to have played a, a cricket match in Uganda. He was bowled out by the governor for four runs, by the way. So 1920, the Uganda British residents decided to go to Nairobi and try to see if they could avenge the defeat. They visited Nairobi and they lost again by 48 runs. But that created a team called the Uganda Cops, which uh, although it was an all-white team, did a lot of a time to uh, arrange overseas trips and arrange overseas cricketers coming over to Uganda. We go to 1923, and that's when the real start begins for club cricket. Luis Geraldo Sequeira, who was the captain of the Kampala Goan Institute and also a business part of a business family, donated the Lewis Cup. This, this trophy marked a very important step in development of club cricket in Uganda. It was initially played as a knockout tournament, but subsequently became a league. And actually, even later on, it had a second division, B division. From 1923 to 1935, it was organized and run by the Kampala Goan Institute. From 1936 to 1955, the Kampala Sports Club took it over. And then from 1956 to the expulsion of 72, the, the uh, Uganda Cricket Association took over. I'll talk more about that a little later. But the first final match that was played, 1923, saw the Asian Sports Association defeat the Uganda police in a thrilling match. <laughs> now, very interestingly, Dennis D'Souza, who's the father of Charlie, uh, bicycled 70 miles the previous day from Jinja to Entebbe and scored an un unbeaten 169 runs in that game. Oh. Uh, we go to 1936 and Messrs. Narandas, Rajaram and company, I think they were from Jinja, they donated a beautiful shield that led to the annual inter-community tournament. Every year, the initial years, it was a triangular round-robin tournament between the Europeans, the Indians, as they call them, and the Goans. In uh, it was played every year except for the war years. In 1949, the Africans joined it under the leadership of Prince Mawanda, who was the brother of the Kabaka of uh, Uganda province. Uh, so that it became a quadrangle in 1949. In 1950, Michael Texera, the Goan captain, achieved the dream of all bowlers when he took all 10 wickets in a match against the Kampala Sports Club, 10 for 43. 1952, the Uganda Cricket Association was formed. The same year, the first fully representative Uganda national team was selected. They played their first game against Kenya in Nairobi and lost by 254 runs uh, in a three-day game. That began the annual inter-territorial matches between uh, Uganda, Tanganyika, and Kenya, and occasionally Zambia would be played. Now, the photograph you're seeing on the, on the screen right now is uh, uh, the, the photograph of the two teams playing that first game in 1952. You'll see John Wilde was the Uganda... The Uganda players are in in, in uh, blue, uh, black uh, uh, black blazers. Um, uh, blazers. blazers, and the Kenya players were uh, in, without the blazers. You'll see Dennis Dawson uh, led the Kenyans, and John Wilde with his pads on left led Ugandan. Ugandans. You'll see photographs of Jala, Blaze Dikuna, Vino Joshi, John Sequera, Dr. McAdam uh, in, in there among the, the many players that played played in that in that game. Uh, we move forward in 1953. Uganda won their first game, beating Tanganyika in Entebbe by five wickets. It was actually that game that Charlie played his first international game for me for Uganda. And I believe, if I'm not wrong, he scored a very useful 34 runs in the first innings and took the wicket of Ron Meridew in the very limited bowling he had. Uh, okay, 1955. 
Banu Patel, who many of you may have remember, you hear of the Indian Recreation Club of Jinja, took five wickets in five balls, all clean balled against Azad, uh, Azad Sports Club to help uh, Indian Recreation Club, which became a force in, in club cricket, uh, win the Lewis Cup. 1956 sees the first visit by a test caliber team to Uganda. It was part of a visit to East Africa by the Pakistan Cricket Writers Club, captained by Kadar. It included uh, a very young Hanif Muhammad. It included uh, Imtiaz Ahmad. It included Wallace Matthias in, in there. In 1956, Salauddin Khan, who, again, I'm sure most of you remember, brilliant batsman for Uganda and East Africa, scored 117 against Tanganyika and Dar es Salaam. That was the first international century by a Ugandan. We then move on to 1957. This is when the tours begin to come. Sundar Cricket Club, captained by Mushtaq Ali, played against Uganda as part of the East African tour. The team included Vinu Mankar, Nari Contractor, Jasu Patel, Pankaj Roy, etc. And uh, they acquitted themselves very well. And uh, I remember Gafur Ahmad scored some good runs against them in Kenya, if I recall correctly. And Gutsaran Singh, too. 1958, early 1958, the first visit by MCC, captain by Ferry Brown. It included Peter Richardson, the England uh, opening bowler. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Charlie got his wicket. Um, Mike Smith and Inglesby McKenzie, etc. 1958, the same year, was a visit by the, the non white South African team, captained by, captained by Basil D'Olivera. And they played uh, part of the East African trip. In 1958, Premji Patel, uh, who was Uganda opening batsman and uh, spinner, became the first Asian to captain Uganda national team. He did that on a trip to Zanzibar and, Zanzibar and Tanganyika in uh, 1958. 1959 was the opening of the Lugogo Stadium, the big uh, sports uh, uh, thing that uh, uh, quarterback, hockey, uh, basketball, uh, boxing, cricket, tennis, etc. The Queen's mother came down and, uh, to open it. And that same year, actually, they had the first international uh, interterritorial field hockey tournament there, but the teams from Zanzibar, Tanganyika, Kenya, and Uganda playing. But uh, that's when Logogo opened, 1959, officially. 1960, the Gujarat Cricket Club came. A very good, strong uh, club from uh, from India, including Nari Contractor, Jai Seema, uh, Farooq Engineer, Pali Umbriga, Arbi Desai. I remember Arbi Desai, uh, first time we saw a bowler running, taking his run up for halfway down the, the, the pitch. Uh, the, the highlight of that game played against Uganda was a, a superb knock of 97 by Zahid Shah, the Uganda pace man. And he got out, unfortunately, hitting his own wickets but uh, he missed his century. 1960 also, Banu Patel was selected as Uganda Sportsman of the Year. Uh, first time a cricketer, and I think the only time a cricketer was selected, uh, you took, uh, beating some strong competition from boxers and athletes uh, at the time, including Francis Nyangweso. 1961 was a visit by Freddie Brown's 11, featuring some English test and county cricketers. What I remember about that visit was that the weather was terrible, uh, they, they, they moved the match to Kampala Sports Club ground because it was slightly elevated and so it was not as wet. Uh, 63 saw the visit by the MCC, another MCC squad, this time led by Mike Smith, including test players Peter Parfit, Tom Cartwright, John Mortimer, the six foot seven inch uh, David Larter, the roly poly Colin Milburn, Mickey Stewart, etc. 1964 uh, was visited by a PIA, Pakistan International Airlines, uh, featuring uh, Hanif, Asif Iqbal, Intakabala, Mantau D'Souza, Sadiq Mohammed. And one of the highlights of that team uh, for Uganda was uh, second innings, Charlie hammered 52 in, in 30 minutes, including hitting Afak Hussein outside of Lugogos over the wall. I remember that very clearly. Um, it was actually a week after my mother had passed away. So I remember that very well, but I was able to go. My dad was a, very keen on me going to the game. 1965, the annual Uganda Quadrangular now became pentangular because the Muslims decided to segregate from the, the what was called the British Asian team and they had a strong team uh, led by people like Salauddin and Nurdin 
and this uh, entered a separate team. It became the pentangular five, five, uh, five teams. 1967, Zambia joins the East African uh, Territorial Tournament, and the tournament was hosted in Tanganyika, that, that Tanzania, and it was the Robert Menzies Tournament, and Uganda emerged as the vic vic victorious. That was the one and only time, I believe. 1967, the fully Indian test team arrived, uh, captained by Manzur Ali Khan Pataudi, the uh, Nawab from Pataudi, included a whole bunch of, about well, the full test team, including the three ace spinners, uh, Bedi, Prasanna, Chandrasekhar, uh, Vadakar, and uh, Farooq Engineer, Kundra, the like. And um, I believe Nurdin got 96 in the, in the second innings for Uganda, but it was in the, in the Subsequent week, when they played East Africa and Kampala, the Dupendra Patel scored an unbeaten 105. Now, part of that 105, he, he was uh, partnering with uh, with uh, Mr. Sixers, Tapu Bai, Mr. Vasan Tapu, who hit 55 runs in no time. And uh, it was a, quite a display of cricket uh, uh, in that game. That yeah. same year, Warwick Shaw came to, uh, led by Mike Smith, uh, but there was a rain delay. Uh, and interrupted the game. Uh, good the innings in that game by Baskar and Lawrence Fernandez, uh, uh, Baskar Bandia. Wabiksha included the West Indian star spinner Lance Gibbs and, of course, Khalid the Badula as well. 1968, in the Inter-Territorials in Nairobi, Uganda made its highest ever team score, 436 runs against Kenya. And uh, Charlie, actually, batting out of number nine, scored 115 not out in that game. Uh, helped by stands with Salauddin and, and Banu. 1970, Nurdin Birani, the Uganda opening batsman, scores 201 against Zambia, breaking the old record of 172 by for Ugandan cricket by Pranjo and Davda. That was the first double century by a Ugandan bat. 1970 was also the visit by the uh, Uganda uh, the India Club uh, Cricket Club of India. And in 1971, Hyderabad Blues, led by M.L. Jaisima, came. As I recall, both Upendra and Sam Balusimbi had strong performances uh, in, in those uh, series of games that they played. Finally, I go to 1972, when East Africa did a tour of England. Very few people talk about it, but they did play about 14 or 15 games in, in, in England, just before the Uganda expulsion. And... Um, the five Ugandan players were, were selected, Upendra Patel, Kishore Vasani, Sam Walusimbi, Lawrence Fernandez, and Duncan Kibaya. Uh, in a match against Cambridge University, Lawrence took seven for 40 in the second innings, including the scalp of Maj Majid Jahangir Khan in both innings. So that that's a, is where we go to uh, with a recap of cricket. Now, obviously, uh, we, we th that it's a it's a stage thing. There were lots of people involved in this thing, but I always want to come back to two items that I'd like to highlight. Uh, one was the the, the Lois Cup, which um, really, like I said, gave an opportunity to a whole bunch of people, including people like myself, to play, uh, you know, club cricket and 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 the like. It uh, at one time there were about 20, 22 teams uh, playing. And, uh, you know, in, in, and, um, and, and like I said, uh, the main game teams were from Kampala and Jinja. Jinja had a strong set of teams, as well as Entebbe. Uh, and um, the, 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 in between April and September every year, there would be, there'd be some matches on Sundays. I, I must uh, indicate that uh, some of the records are sketchy from a certain period of time as to who the winners are were. But I have been able to determine that uh, uh, Ginger Recreation Club, uh, who dominated in the late 50s, uh, led by people like Banu and Kishore at the time, um, and Mangaldas and Navneet and the like, uh, they won it uh, six or seven times uh, in that uh, the trophy. Kampala Gones won it six times. Uh, most of them, many of them were in the early years, but we, they won it in 63 as well. Uh, Kampala Sports Club won it four times, and and uh, Entebbe Sports Club, which was subsequently de defunct, won it four times. Um, a lot of other teams, uh, Jai, Azad, uh, Muslim Sports Club, Aga Khan won it in, in, in 1953, uh, Lugazi won it in 1967, 
uh, and uh, and um, uh, among uh, among the, the uh, tournaments that were held. So that was one way to highlight yourself. The other very interesting uh, thing we had in U Uganda was uh, in Kenya you had the Europeans against Asians every every year, and that was competition. But in Uganda we were able to initially have the triangular, then the uh, quadrangular and pentangular, and it made some very exciting cricket, uh, intercommunity cricket, very much so. Uh, that trophy, the Asians, what we call the, they were called Indians first, then when uh, you get, India got independent, became British Asians, then it became uh, Asians, when the Muslims separated from the, from, uh, the, the, the rest. Uh, so the Asians won it 14, the trophy 14 times, Amazingly, the Goans won it 11 times, uh, the Europeans won it five times, and the Muslims, who only played for a short while, starting in 1965, won it twice. I have a record of all the ones that they, they won, and um, they were, it was interesting to see how there would be surges. The Europeans, for instance, from 1950, they won it in 50, 51, and 54, and they were going for it in 53, but they, but, uh, they lost to the Goans in the first round and not, not them. The Asians were extremely strong from 57 to 59, with Banu and Kishore coming before Zahid Shah. They won it then. The Goans were strong in the early 60s, 60, 62, 64, 66. And then the last one in 1971, uh, it was actually played in seven, early 72, was, was the Goans won uh, that one too. Uh, and uh, the, the Africans never won uh, 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 it, but when the Muslims made it into the, on their own team in 1965, the first round they played the Africans and the Africans beat them. So it's very interesting how, how things have, took place. So those were, uh, those were the, some of the highlights. There was also uh, the commercial league played on Saturdays for, for uh, companies, uh, UEB, uh, uh, Gailey and Roberts, etc. So a lot of that, we saw a lot of our top players play in some of those afternoon games on Saturdays in a very friendly environment. School cricket was also very important. A great foundation for uh, cricket for, uh, among uh, uh, younger people. Uh, there used to be two divisions. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bharat, but uh, I think there were two divisions I remember. And A division usually had uh, Budo, uh, um, Old Kampala School, Jinja, Mbale, and Kololo. And, and then the B divisions included some of the other teams. But some of the top players got their start in, in, in that area. So that's a recap of uh, history of, uh, in, in Goa, in, in, uh, in Uganda. Um, I, um, I had a list of, uh, I wanted to highlight who the, the captains of Uganda teams were, uh, but I don't know if that, that's on. Yeah, so there you are. I did a recap of these were the people who captained the Uganda team. And you'll notice in the, in the pre-independence period, it was largely uh, European. Minus John, one, kid. Uh, John Wilde. Minus one. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, John Wilde, Dr. Ian McAdam, uh, uh, Henley, who was a, a wicket keeper for a long time, uh, Alan Boucher, Ed Wilson, and then Premier was the first uh, Asian guy. Then Shashikant Patel, diminutive, uh, great, great all-rounder, good spin bowler and good late order bat batsman. John Sequeira, who uh, he captained against, um, uh, actually, it was 1960, John Sequeira against uh, Gujarat. Uh, uh, Ron Meridew, uh, captain in 60 as well. Mangal Das captained against uh, uh, Freddie Brown, 11. Peter D'Souza, captain for two or three years in the, in the early 60s. Maksud Malik, a captain in 66 and 67, including the time when they won the uh, East African title in, in Dar es Salaam. Kishore Basani, captain in 68, Salauddin in 69, and, and Charlie in 1970. And 1971 was a Mushtaq Ramji. Actually, just before we were kicked out of Uganda, the, the team was selected, a group, squad was selected for the upcoming interterritorial, which I believe was going to be held in. Nairobi in 1972, uh, and and uh, a number of uh, Salauddin was going to be captain, and, and and a number of players, including Charlie and, and uh, <laughs> Pendra, etc., were going to be in that squad. But it never happened because the Asians were kicked out. Uh, how how did I do for a time? 
Do you want to have five minutes? Yes, John, um, carry on. Uh, can you introduce Sam Valusumbi and uh, talk about him into the video for us, please? Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. So uh, we'll move on to that. And uh, Sam was a uh, uh, university mate of mine at McCarran from 1968 to 1971. And uh, he was a, a very, very good sportsman. Very few people know something about Sam. Sam was a young boy when he uh, at, uh, went to Budo and he just put it inserted into this cricket game and he went to catch the ball and he, it hit his teeth and knocked a, a tooth of, uh, of his out and he made it he said I've got to, I've got to master this game so he then went on to be a top school uh, uh, player in, in school cricket he came to McCarrer in 1968 he played for the three years in the, in the McCarrier team. Uh, he was a captain in his second year. Uh, by that time, he had already made the national team. He was also a very good soccer player. And he also established a record for uh, the 120 uh, high hurdles in the, for McCarrier, 15.1 seconds at the time. And he was a good long jumper. So he was an all-road sportsman uh, and a hell of a nice guy. Uh, and a really, really nice guy. Uh, he went on to be in the East African team at the World Cup in 75. And if, and if cricket survived the, the lean years in Uganda, Sam Walusimbi is, is one of the key people who kept it going uh, through that period of time and, uh, you know, made sure that he anchored it all. I did meet him in 2012 in Uganda when I met, when I went. He, was, he had just retired as uh, uh, secretary, chairman of the National Council of Sports. So on to a little video here. He looks back on his career. So, uh, off you go. Thanks, Sanvi. <laughs> Thank you. 
I was lucky that I had an able brother who was uh, who had the case with him before. And uh, he's one really who used to be in the game even before I went to the game. He used to come back in our backyard. So when I went to Budo in, 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 in primary one, I had already had some idea. When I was young, even before I went to senior school, I would I had a chap called uh, Sozi, Robert Sozi. I thought he was a brilliant boy. He was not quick, but he was a left hander. He went from Bodo and then went to So as a young man, I used to. Even his family. 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 Which had been uh, put in Lugogo. So Lugogo was unplayed at that time, up to 84. 84, we decided to move to Lugogo and bring it. And we literally, literally, you know, dug up Lugogo, took off this, cut the grass and so on and so forth, laid the, the beach and so on and so forth in 84, led by. Young man called Tim comes up and calls me after him speaking in the air. But anyway, we brought back. When we came to Lugogo, we had to form clubs so that we can have a competition. So that's when we formed clubs. That's when the tornadoes came, the wanderers, Indo Park, we did solid Indo Park. Uh, but of course, it, it changed later on and so on. So Advertising on YouTube helps me reach engaged customers like Jenna, who's been searching for landscapers on Google. Okay, um, Brad, that is, uh, was the end of the video. Um, thank you, Tanvir and uh, John. Uh, thank you very much indeed for a very interesting and um, highlight the history of Uganda cricket, uh, unbelievable names and uh, stuff. Uh, and to see while Sam will soon be again on the video was absolutely brilliant. Well done, thank you very much indeed. Uh, gentlemen, just before we proceed to the next one, may I just remind you that um, we're just running about 10, 15 minutes late. We started a bit late, so please bear with us. Uh, we'll run through the program now. And uh, let me now highlight the next um, segment. Uh, which is obviously the highlight of the evening. It's going to be the spotlight interview, and the interviewer is going to be Norman De Costa, who is obviously a cricketer and a very well-known and renowned writer, um, written for several newspapers uh, and articles in the book. And the interviewee is our great legend of cricket, um, Ali D'Souza, a great friend, a fantastic cricketer, and all around uh, played for Uganda and obviously kept in Uganda in 1970. Charlie, it's great to see you and thank you for your time and we really appreciate and look forward to hearing some good stories from you. Norman, over to you. All right, thanks Boris. Nice to see you, Charlie. Hi. Okay, Charlie, Good tell man. us, when and why did you get into cricket as field uh, hockey was more popular with the goals? Yeah, no doubt. Hockey was a game that you played every day, but cricket we played once a week and then we used to go the practice with the seniors. We never got to bat, but we were allowed to bowl and field around, right? And then we had the odd games against the Indians used to pick up a side and come and play the Gone Boys. We used to play on the on the hockey ground with a mat on, on there. And uh, we had quite a, quite a number of games that way. Yeah. And uh, 
did you take up uh, to cricket? Were you following in your dad's footsteps? Because I understand he was a terrific cricketer. Well, we are playing both games, really. You know, um, what 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 used to happen? The Goans were getting older, and they were always looking for the younger guys, and they picked the hockey guys to come and, you know, fill in the gap to field to field. Actually, you know what I mean? They couldn't make 11, 11 players, so that's how we got a little more exposure to the game at that level. And I used to go with my dad for all the games. All the all the games that he took part in, he was still playing at that time. Okay, so obviously the selectors noticed your potential at a pretty young age. And when did you first get into the Goan side? Goan eleven. I, I like you said. I, I used to get called. I was a good bowler, and I used to. I was the one that was picked up to play because we were all good fielders. The, the hockey players, we were all good fielders, right? And uh, I had some success. And then when we played, when I was selected to the Gone Gone national team in the in the quadrangular, that was my first appearance. We played uh, in Entebbe, and we beat the Asian, very strong Asian team. In that game, we were always lo almost losing by an innings. And uh, towards the end, I, I I got five wickets to win the win the game, and that's where I made my my debut. Okay, so that's when your dream came true, and Uganda picked you up. Yeah, after that. Was it right after, after that? that? After that, yes. Uh, we we had a selection game, and my name was put forward, and then. Uh, I batted well in the first inning. I went at number number six, and I was not out. But you know, those days there was no. Sh we were playing. It was a slow game, and then we were we had to follow on. And when we followed on, the captain put me to open, and I batted right through the inning. You know, and I I didn't score very many runs, but I stayed right through the inning, and we lost many innings. And then I got selected to the Uganda team. Okay. So who did you make your debut against internationally? Sorry again? Who did you get your first cap against? Which country did you play? Of? Oh, yeah, which country? Well, yeah, we played against Tanzania. And, uh, that's the first first time I got it at 18. And uh, the, they had a lot of strong players. I was, you know, among the, the junior players. And I was I went at number 10 batting. <laughs> And I, was, I, I got to bowl after about four, other four or five ball, uh, of the main bowlers bowled. But I managed to get two wickets for a, show, for a low score. And at, at, at number 10, I, we, most of the players somehow failed. I got a third, quick 36. So, so I established my, my position in the, in the, in the end of the side. Well, that's, that's fantastic. I always thought... You were Uganda's best all-rounder. But what surprised me most was not, that you were not given enough of the ball or for that matter, as a batsman. I've seen you bat, I've played against you. I thought you were a terrific batsman as well. But they always put you at the tail end. Was there some, I, I can't understand this. Maybe you, if you could enlighten us to why. Yeah, well, it, it uh, well, we had uh, we had uh, the problem with this. I was the only goan in the team, like you know, and the rest of the game were mainly the Indian players, and Salah was there among the Muslims, and uh, Walusimi was sometimes there as well. So I had to I had to keep up with what, what when I was given to bowl, you know, I had no say in the matter, and even the batting it was the same old story, you know. So I just accepted it and then carry on playing. What else could I do? You never opened your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't. <laughs> I was not that type of person. I didn't make a noise about anything. I just played the game and that's what I did. Oh, that's terrific. <clears throat> Tell me, Charlie, there were quite a few international uh, teams that visited uh, Uganda, as John mentioned in his, uh, in his story earlier on. Could you tell me, you played against some of the world's best renowned players like Hanif Muhammad, etc. Who was a player maybe who impressed you most? 
well, there were there were quite a few MCC players. Uh, Mike Smith was there. In fact, I got his wicket. Uh, in India, uh, Vinamankar was there, uh, and there are quite a number of them. You know, there are quite a number of players that way. Were there were any of the international players? Were many of the international players sort of happy to see you playing, or commended you? You know, with your batting or bowling. Well, quite a few did did come and tell me. There was a time that we were playing MCC. I think you've muted yourself, Charlie. Charlie, you muted. Charlie, you muted yourself. yourself. Please, you muted yourself. It should be on the right hand side of your screen. Charlie, on the right hand side of your screen. That's where you had it before. Let me unmute you. No, not yet. Not yet. Still can't hear you, Charlie. Charlie, can you get Nicole to help you? I can't do it on the centralized. Charlie, you've done something. Charlie. Charlie, is your daughter there? Looks like Charlie got stumped. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Charlie's stuck and he's done something can't do on the centralized either. Me, can you have a go? Is it you can unmute him? I can't do it from my end. I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. Um well, I mean, it, it might have been from my side that he got uh, he got muted, but um I'm trying to unmute him. Yes, hang tight, Charlie. The what it's it's a it's a water break. Hey, Charlie, I'll, Charlie, I'll send you a prompt. Can you click on it? You will just click yes. You want to unmute yourself, yeah? It should come on your screen. He's gone. He's gonna get his daughter. That should help. Yeah. But if 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 then we we'll mute mute him later. Hi, everybody. Joined in. Yes, sorry, Norman. I, I, we both, we and myself, we both sent uh, Charlie uh, an unmute prompt. He just had to click on a button, so he's obviously a bit lost. Neither of us can unmute directly. He's, yeah, going, to get his... he's going to get his daughter. As we waiting, whilst we're waiting for Charlie, uh, Charlie to come back, um, Thank you to all the others for joining in. I've seen a few more faces joining in. Uh, thank you all. Um, when we op do the open forum, we'll unmute you all and uh, we'll have a talk and we'll have a chat. Good to see you guys. Can you nice um, put, put your nice videos on in the meantime so we can see your faces and we can identify you? It's Vikram, first of all, you'll be first on. So can you put your video on, please? Ali, you okay now? No, not yet. I sent you a prompt. You just need to click on, on the prompt, unmute yourself. You'll automatically unmute yourself. You should see a prompt on your screen. No. Hello. Uh... Marat, did you ask me to unmute? No, we're asking uh, Charlie to unmute. Charlie, we asked uh, Charlie to. Charlie's done something. We can't do it here. So we're sending a prompt to Charlie. He just has to click on a button. It will automatically unmute himself. Or there should be a mic at the bottom of your screen, Charlie. And you can just click on the mic. Isn't Nicole there? 
Gali? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thanks, Charlie. We got you back. Okay, we got oh, you back. Sure. I'm on my daughter's computer and I don't know how to use the damn thing. <laughs> now you're doing well. You're doing well. So, no worries, you, Charlie. Take it easy. Okay, uh, Charlie, okay, carry, let's carry on, Charlie. Yeah. So when it, came, when it came to selection for the Uganda team, do you reckon there was much favoritism? Or was uh, this my imagination or was this true? Well, as it turned out, you know, most of the clubs will try to push their own players like that. And that was the biggest problem, you know. If just one batsman scored a good score, they put him in the side. You know, they want to fight him to play in the side. And they were not geared to play. They were good for club cricket. But when it came to the Uganda team, uh, they didn't have the temperament, you know. So right. this, this was our biggest problem in Uganda. When you talk about Uganda, yeah. Kenya, Tanzania, and in later years, of course, we got Zambia in. Which country do you think had the best players and did extremely well? In my in my opinion, I thought it was Kenya, but you have your own opinion. Yeah, no. I thought uh, I, uh, Zambia were quite good, uh, but I thought that the Tanzania team were a good side. You, were a good side. You know, they had a good good all rounders and good players. R D C D. You know, they were good. They were good batsmen. Uh, you know, they were sort of had good test test experience playing long 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 innings like you know we were used to the uh, we didn't get much exposure to that right. so that was our, our, our disadvantage okay and uh, what surprised me when i first came to uganda that you had a couple of african players on the team that was john naganda and sam balusimbi i was kind of surprised because in kenya we had no african players at all we only knew Africans who set up the grounds for us, and that was about it. When did yeah. the Africans get involved in the game in Uganda? See, they, they used to play at, at Budo, the college, uh, the uh, Budo College was an African school, and they were quite active at the school. But once they left school, they, were, they didn't, they didn't, they, they were more interested in other sports, like, you know. But when Prince Moanda took it up in the first year of our cricket, he, he started a team. And he got a number of the uh, uh, Africans to play. Some of them had played in England. They had gone to school and they had played in England. But they didn't want to play, uh, tie themselves to playing every Sunday. But they, they took part in the in the triangular, you know. Unfortunately, they, they were not good enough to, to win. But they, uh, they made a good attempt. But Naginda and uh, John were outstanding players, you know. And they played for Uganda. Uh, as you know, one should be played for uh, the World Cup. and. And again, I could have played for the World Cup as well, you know, because he was a good player. And tell me, Charlie, which was your most memorable experience with the bat, internationally speaking? Sorry, say that again? No, internationally. Yes. Which was your most memorable experience with the bat? Yeah, I had two. Uh, uh, with the bat, I was with Kenya in most, most often. In the interna uh, inter inter provincial, I'd scored the century. In Uganda, also, I'd scored uh, when we were playing Kenya. Uh, I got 100, and then again, the second inning, I scored 87. And uh, I was given run out to a very controversial run out, you know. But that was, that was, that's what my, my best performance, really. And what about the, with the ball? Ball, uh, I did uh, again in Zambia. Um, I played, I batted well against the, the Zambian players uh, and we, we lost. And then when we were playing Kenya, Kenya were almost uh, almost beating us. But in the second inning, I got five wickets and then we, we managed to win the game. So I had a good spell there. And uh, even at the uh, internationals in Nairobi, 
uh, prior to the World Cup when the, the world team was coming in. I got uh, the highest batting order, uh, batting bat uh, and bowling analysis, you know. But I, for some reason, I, I, I didn't get selected to the team that played the World Cup. That was my biggest disappointment. Yeah, so that was your biggest heartbreak. Uh, maybe not make. Did you ever play for East Africa? I don't think you did. He did. Uh, I played in Uganda. Yes, I, I played. I played it in Uganda, but I didn't. Not outside Uganda. Okay, this was for East Africa. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. And against who did you play on that occasion, Charlie? Uh, it, it was MCC. Oh, MCC was it? In 63. We played this. Um, I'm not remembering now. Oh, okay, that's fine. Sorry about and that. Tell me, I was with you in uh, in Andolo, in uh, Zambia, when you had those wickets against Kenya. It was a big shock. <laughs> Kenya losing to you guys, it was maybe all because of what you did in that second innings. Can you describe that feeling at that time, the beating Kenya? Yeah, what? Play, explain what? No, beating Kenya in Andola. You remember? In Zambia? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. What did that feel like? <laughs> because Kenya oh, uh, was running away with the match. Yeah. Uh, in that game, what had happened, Salarin was the captain. And he didn't bowl me very much. I know. And, uh, <laughs> and in the second inning, uh, towards the end, uh, well, halfway through, he was not feeling well. So I was the vice captain. He left the field and he gave me the captaincy. So I put a couple of bowlers and then I put myself on. And that's, that's how I got those five wickets, you know. So it was it was just, just my good luck. Anyway, what can I say? No, it wasn't your good luck. You bowled well. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, let's, uh, there's one interesting uh, comment that you had made to me recently. You said that you were so keen on cricket that you would make a trip all the way from Kampala to Mombasa. I can't believe it. And back on a weekend. Tell us about this trip. Yeah, we formed a team and we were going to play three games. We played Friday afternoon in Nakuru. And then we played another, uh, on Saturday afternoon. We played in Nairobi. Uh, Rift Valley, I think it was Rift Valley that we played. And then we were supposed to take the train, evening train on Saturday to go to Mombasa. But there was a strike in in, in Kenya on the, uh, on the train. So we had to drive all the way to Mombasa. So we drove all night to Mombasa, uh, you know, got there early in the morning, had a sleep. And then we played played the Mombasa club. And Albert Fernandez was in Mombasa. He was the captain of the team there. And they had, they had a nice team. And we... We had a very good game, and uh, we we collapsed at one time. But Pran Davra and myself brought the score right up to. We wanted five runs to win, and, and I got out. And uh, unfortunately, the last batsman came. About we were tied the score, and he got out on the last, so we tied the game. And and soon after that, we had to dress up and go back and drive all the way to Kampala. I drove all night. <laughs> I reached early in the morning and went to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you had a coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No since since uh, we're uh, running late, I'll just ask you 10 quick questions. You can give me one word answers, Charlie. Yeah. Okay. Which teammate were you closest with at the club level or internationally? Which, uh, which club? Which teammate were you closest with? As a club level or internationally? Really, Lawrence Fernandes, you know, we played together in most of these games. Okay. And who in your mind was the best batsman, so during your career, and the best bowler? Uh, are you talking about uh, uh, the... Yeah, club level or internationally. You... I, there were quite a number, you know. Uh, Tanzania had Vasan Tapu, uh, Jara was a very good bowler in Kenya, you know. And, and we also had uh, Upendra. Upendra Patel was pretty good. Okay. And in your estimation, who was the best captain among the East African squads? 
Who was the, oh, okay. I thought Bruce Ronaldson was the best captain uh, that I played against. Right. Okay, this is the Tanzanian guy. Yes, yes. Yeah. And during the recent World T20 tournament, who impressed you the most? The, the? The World T20, the World T20 tournament. Yes. Who impressed you the most? Uh, the the England, England team seemed to be good until they lost Roy, but I was quite impressed with the uh, Afghanistan. They they put up a good show for the considering it was the first time, you know their bowling was good, their fielding was good, and even even their batting to some extent. Okay. So I was quite impressed with them. Okay, can you name someone you look up to who is not a cricketer? Yeah. Oh, the, definitely. Uh, the two tennis players, Federer and Djokovic. Okay. They are really outstanding players, you know, and they've played all these years without getting injured. And, you know, they've really played, still to this day, they're still playing at the top of their level. Okay. And uh, who has inspired you the most? As a cricketer, who has inspired you the most? Well, most of these cricketers, you know, different at different times, most of the other cricketers. Okay. And tell me, name one dream player, playing or retired, you would want on your squad. Oh, uh, to me, from my own experience, I would, I would pick Michael Texera. He was a brilliant f fast bowler, a very good batsman, and an excellent fielder. Okay. And finally, which of these formats you would have enjoyed playing. Is it T20, the 50 overs, or test cricket? I think I prefer the 50 overs. 50 overs? Yes. All right, Charlie, that was great talking to you after all these years. Thank you. And I was so happy to see my old friend, R.D. Patel, today. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Not at all. Thank you. Tanvir, if you want to take over, or is it Bharat? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh... Norman, thank you. A wonderful job. Charlie, what can I say? You're a legend. You're a star. And don't worry about losing you for a while. You've taken the courage and you've done extremely well. We're all very proud of you and great to see you. Keep up the good things and we'll see you on a regular basis from now on. You're getting very good at it, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, now we're going to the open session. We got a few questions and uh, some uh, interesting stories about Charlie. So. We start with the senior. RD, you're first on. You unmute, unmuted yourself. Did you want to talk about Charlie for a minute or so, please? Yeah. Uh, if I talk about Charlie, I think he's one of the greatest all rounders Uganda had. And uh, he was as a chain ball. After he opened the bowling, also, I think. Was a, he was always successful. He was always successful. He used to take wickets or score runs. When he used yeah. to come five, six, or seven, he used to come and he, he would sometimes slog the bowling. And he would, I mean, it was successful. And he got the runs and got wickets. And he was a very useful uh, team member for the Uganda team. I, I praise him quite highly. I wish him all the best. Uh, you have known him. Thank you very much. Thank you, R.D. That's very nice of you. Thank you, Charlie. A quick response to him. Thank you, R.D. Thank you, R.D. Thank, thank, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Vikram. Vikram, uh, fire away. It's your turn. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for me uh, for inviting me, Bharat, to this uh, forum. And uh, um, I, I'm, I'm so so uh, uh, emotionally, you know enhanced by seeing some of my heroes that I used to see in Uganda when I was a schoolboy. And I remember very, very clearly, obviously I met RD the other day in London. Uh, I remember the, uh, the three trios of uh, um, uh, Kampala Goans, Charlie, Peter, and Lawrence. Um, I had a great opportunity to play, uh, play with Lawrence in Ealing Cricket Club in England for about three years. Um, uh, I, I, I still remember, you know, that um, um, this, this were the three greatest spinners, you know, that uh, 
uh, Uganda head, include, and, and the additional one, obviously, is uh, Kishore Wasani. But um, uh, I have sweet memories. I have not played much against Charlie. Uh, I only played one game. You know, I, I was a 15-year-old, and Lugazi selected me in 1967. Uh, and Kishore Wasani, you know... And uh, I said we'll go number three because uh, uh, Charlie, Peter, and uh, and Lawrence were bowling and no, none of the, the Lugazi cricketers wanted to go and bat because they were all worried, you know, that these guys will fox them. And so I was sent to send in number three. And I think Bhaskar Riyas is uh, on, on the, uh, the uh, this thing as well. He'll remember it. But um, uh, I've always been a good player of uh, spin and, and it was a natural talent. And I did hit Charlie... You may not remember, but my first two balls, I hit you for a boundary in the mid-wicket. And I suddenly became an instant hero by, by uh, hitting Charlie for two fours. Uh, almost 50 years since, and I still remember it in my memory because, you know, you were so revered. You were so highly regarded uh, as, as a bowler. And I know that you were also a very, very good um, uh, all-rounder. Later on, playing with uh, Laurie at Ealing, we talked a lot about you guys, uh, especially you, Charlie. You know, um, and uh, and 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 one of my biggest uh, desire was to go back to Uganda after my education in Bangalore to go and play again in Uganda. I did come for a very brief uh, this thing in Uganda, and um, in 1971, uh, played against Upendra and 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 um, uh, the guys, and I think. Uh, I didn't play against you, but I played another uh, Goan guy, you know, in Entebbe. His name was Felix. Yeah. Felix uh, De Souza. My Di God, Mello. that guy was. Mello. Mello. Sorry? Di Mello. Di Mello. Di Mello. Yeah, Felix De Mello. <laughs> and he was fast. I still remember, you know, I used to wear a short in those days because we didn't have pants. And he gave me a nice little thing in my tie that, you know, I, I had there probably for a week uh, to remember him from. <laughs> So yes, Charlie, lovely moment. You were you were like one of the best. Uh, I remember you. I was only 15, but even before that, I used to come and watch you uh, whenever you came to Lugazi to play. So we love you, and, and I'm so happy to see you that you are so nice, healthy, and uh, and, and doing well. And 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 for thank you very much for lovely memories of Uganda cricket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Charlie, you want a quick response, Charlie? No, thank you very much. I, I don't quite remember him. But are you uh, any uh, uh, relation of Jala of Nairobi? So Jala of Nairobi is actually a, a very good friend of mine. I played against him in London for a few years. Even at, at 60, he was still bowling fast. But his son, yes. Les, is a very, very good friend of ours. And yes, he, uh, um, he was probably one of the best cricketers in those days in, Uganda, in Kenya. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, you know, Charlie, you might know my uh, elder brother. He played for a year in, in Uganda in 71, 72. I don't know if you were, I, you were still playing there in 71, 72. I left Uganda in 72 uh, in April uh, before, you know, the Exodus. And I was selected for Uganda, but I oh. didn't play because I had to go back to my college. But my brother came in and he kept wickets for Uganda. Oh. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your time. What's very, very, very enlightening and good memories. Um, Charlie, next, Charlie, for you, especially next, we have your very good friend, Multan Bhai Johan. So he's going to talk something about you. Oh. What do you, Multan Bhai? Come on. Hello, Charlie. Hi, hi. Multan, you, look good. You, you look good, man. You look good. Thank you, thank you. You are a wicket keeper. Wicket keeper for Jai, right? <laughs> azad, 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 Charlie. Azad, 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 right, right, right. That's all. Uh, Char Charlie was my hero really when I was young. You know, my my early cricketing days, you know, um, I used to sort of go and watch him around the grounds, you know, all over Kampala, really. Um, yeah. He used to play for, I think he played for first level in uh, uh, KGI. And, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I think that, that that team at that time was so strong. I mean, it had what people like Texera, um, John uh, Sequera, Mascarena, Sally Dyes, Dimelo Brothers, and many more. You know, I, th I think that side was so strong, unbeatable. Really. 
Um, <laughs> later on, when I got the opportunity to play cricket with and against you, it was a great um, privilege for me, really. Charlie was a, Charlie was a great all-rounder. Thank you. A, sta Thank you, a, sta a, stylish, a stylish batsman and a brilliant medium-fast bowler cutting the ball on either side of the wicket. Besides cricket, he also played good hockey, I think. But I'm yes. not too sure. Did you did you pl did you play hockey? Uh, did you play for Uganda in hockey? I did. Hockey? I did. I did. I'm I did. sure you did. I'm sure you did. Uh, it was a, it, it was very nice. You know, last time when you came to London and and and, and to um, uh, meet, meet, meet you there. You know, I think it was yeah, it was, yeah. It was great, really. Um, and hope good. to see you again sometime, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, Chinbai, thank you very much indeed. Very inspiring words. And Charlie, again, thank you. Next, we have uh, Basker. Basker was here, unless he's on icon. We can't identify you. We can't see your face. Basker, can you, if it's you on icon, can you sort of put your video on so we know who you are? Otherwise, we can't see you. Say you, Basker, on iPhone. There's no name on it. You, you came with your name earlier, but uh, you're the only one I can't identify. Okay, whilst we're playing with you, can we go to Kishobai Gajar? Kishobai, can you unmute yourself? Present you a prompt. You wanted to say something about Charlie? Hi, Charlie. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you, Kishor? Yeah, we are all in Canada, Toronto, not far from you. Yeah, I know you didn't. You used to keep in touch at one time, and now you yeah. lost touch. We've lost touch. Yeah, when I left Mississauga, it's nice to know that you're looking good, and it's good memories that we have. Go back to all those days. Thank you, thank you. And I enjoyed the, all the times that we had played against each other, and that we met here in Toronto when Alvin Fernandez and these were at that cricket gathering, I think. I, I met him, yes. Yes, at that time yeah. he recognized me and he said, yes, I know you. And then we once met at yeah. parking. Anyhow, you look good and I just want to wish you happy, healthy Thank you, life. Kishore. And you look good like Adi Patel. So cricket has really done you well, sports that uh, still keeps you young. <laughs> and I'm sure we will meet soon here in Toronto, like Razak yeah. thing. Thank you, Kishore. Thank you. And we wish you good health and prosperity. And then uh, I get news about you from Stan D'Souza. Is it related to you? Stan, yeah, well, we're, <laughs> we're good friends, family friends. Yeah, his dad and my Stan dad is, D'Souza, yeah. He gives his dad and my too. dad used to play cricket together. Yes, yes, yes. yes. His father was also a good cricketer, yeah. Yes, yes. I get good news from him. And I said, any yeah, one of these days, I'll come to Etobicoke and we should meet again. Yes, for sure, for sure. I wish you good health, Charlie. You look good. And to you, best. all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Kishore. Bye. Thank you, Charlie, again. Uh, we also have another Uganda cricketer on the screen. Uh, Rajni Bai, do you want to say a couple of things? Over to you. I've unmuted you. Yes, yes. Um, hello, Charlie. Nice to see you again. And, yeah, thank you. And see you all, always your smiling face. <laughs> the, last, the last time we met was in Toronto when you when we when we uh, saw you in a in a hotel or something. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is when we had our Jinja re reunion in uh, Toronto. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Good to see you, and yeah. also good to hear from John Norana and uh, John um, uh, John uh, what's his name uh, De Costa. Nicole, Norman Nicole. De Costa. Norman uh, De Costa. Yeah, Norman De Costa. Very good information, especially John Norna, who has got so much knowledge on Uganda cricket. He should be writing a book on it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> All the best. Yeah, Bye. John did a great job. Bye. Uh, thank, thank you, you Rajni Bai. For... Thank you, Rajni. Thank I mean, you, Charlie and Rajni Bai. Those who don't know, Rajni Bai is the younger brother of the Banu. famous Ugandan cricketer Banubai Patel. I know that. I keep it. I keep on. We are in touch on on, on WhatsApp almost every day. Yes, that's right. I keep in touch with him. <laughs> good, good, uh, good. Thanks, Charlie. Um, I can't see Basker back on again. So we have uh, John Norona yeah. to.
finish off uh, and say something about Charlie? Well, uh, before, before I say something about Charlie, I just want to acknowledge a couple of people. One in particular is Mohan uh, from Jinja, Mohan Patel, the late Mohan Patel, who was the scorekeeper for uh, Jinja Recreation Club for many, many years and kept great uh, records, photographs, and for many years on Facebook, uh, we, we stayed in touch. And a lot of the stuff I was able to derive from him as well, some of the records he has, including blow by blow on certain matches, key matches that Ginger played against, uh, ex absolutely excellent stuff from him. The other person I want to pay tribute to is the late Vali Jamal. Uh, some of you may not know, but Vali was from Uganda, son of the, well, very famous Ivy Jamal. He was uh, an academic, but he was writing a book on the contribution of Uganda Asians. Uh, he, he was writing, it became so big and unfortunately he passed away. But he, he, was, he was the guy many years, 15 years ago, who said to me, John, why don't you write something on going cricket? Why don't you record what you're, you know, you, you've got the memory. Why don't you do that? And that encouraged me to start looking at it and start uh, collecting stuff. So I just want to acknowledge that the two of them. Charlie was my hero. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Uh, and I remember him from the time I was maybe four or five years old. I have a clear memory of matching. That makes you old, Charlie. <laughs> and and, and uh, he doesn't look old. And uh, honestly, like I said, the R.D. Patel remembered uh, uh, 1957. That weekend was my first Holy Communion. I remember it very clearly. And I would, was running away from the events to go to watch this game. And in the second innings, Charlie uh, came into bat. Uh, they were going to, Uganda was going to lose, but he came at number eight and he cracked 50 runs in 30 minutes all over the ground. And I looked at this guy and said, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> but he just hammered the, the bowling. I think, answering one, to one of your questions, Norman, I think Charlie was probably more successful as a batsman at, at international level at six, seven, eight. If you look at his scores, he seems to have done better there and and uh, and uh, created a lot of uh, trouble. The, the one game in 1965 against Kenya, I've written about it, where Peter D'Souza was captain again and Gurusaran Singh was captain of Kenya. And he turned the game around in two innings. The first innings, he came in at number eight and cracked 79. Second innings, he what was going to be a follow-on, Uganda were in the chase to win the game. And he was here, Narutam. <laughs> the other guy we got to mention is Narutam Patni. He was very, good. very good all-rounder. Played yeah. for both Uganda and Kenya. So, Charlie was my hero. Uh, and uh, uh, talking about Vikram, Charlie doesn't remember this. Uh, yeah, but uh, I was playing for Makerere staff. And he first came against Kampala Gons at Muslim ground. Charlie was keeping wickets in that game. And Lawrence Fernandez bowled to me. He bowled a short ball and I smashed it for a four to the boundary. And my, my hero is the wicket keeper. And he said to me, Great shot, and you know how you feel. Charlie can't remember it, obviously, but for me, it was I was up there. So Charlie, <laughs> good health. Final thing I got to tell you, Charlie was a, the genes have, have have spread. His his both his sons have played field hockey for Canada, and his grandsons are going to be stars. They are they're already. One of them is looks like he could be a good golfer. Another one is playing good ice hockey. So, God bless you and take care. Thanks for the memories. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. John, very Thanks. interesting words, uh, very inspiring. And Charlie, once again, <coughs> so much to say about you. What I'm going to do, we've got a couple of minutes. We started a bit late. We only got a couple more guests on the screen. So uh, floor is open. Anybody want to say anything? Uh, Bashipa, you want to say something? Bashipa, I have unmuted you in case you wanted to say something. And uh, Ridas Pai also, I have un unmuted you. You want to say something? Okay, fine, thank you. Shiba, are you okay? Or you Sorry. need to unmute yourself. Hi, are you talking to me, Bharatbhai? Yes, I am. Sorry, Shiba, you're the only one we haven't spoken to yet, so... Do you want to say something? Anything. Doesn't have to be about Charlie. Anything you want to say. You can obviously say something about Charlie. 
No, no how we're we doing and cricket wise and what we can do to improve or anything you want to say. Thank you very much, uh, Nicola, uh, uh, Charlie, and uh, uh, John. Uh, hearing you out at that time, I think we were still way, way too young, either in diapers or just uh, growing up. Hearing your cricket uh, uh, experience, it's it's great. It's great to know you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Vashibai. We got the other Vashibai Kara. Do you, do you want to say anything? I unmuted you. Do you want to say anything at all? <clears throat> no, I've got nothing much to say. I'm just enjoying listening to all the reminiscence of cricket in Uganda and well, East Africa. So thank you very much for organizing all. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks for your company and thanks for supporting us. The floor is open if anybody wanted to do anything else. If not, then uh, we'll pass just... them. I'll pass it to Raza Pai, uh, main the organizer sure. and stuff to say a word of thanks. Yeah. May I say a word or two? Yeah, sure. Of... Yeah, just okay. before I uh, go on to my word of thanks and Raza all. Bhai, just, uh, sorry, Raza Bhai, just one second. Ardi wants to say something quickly. Sure. One second, sorry. Come on, Ardi. So, so many things, so much has been said about me. I think I feel a bit embarrassed. But I'd like to say one or two things to put into records. I was the first player to be appointed as captain to travel the East African team outside East Africa. I was the first player to take the team to Zambia. Zambia. And I captained the side. And in the first we, first <laughs> match, we were really beaten in the <laughs> After we did, and Upendra Patel, myself, and the other one or two players. Unfortunately, CD was already in Zambia. He, he was there in Zambia only. And uh, we did otherwise quite well performing all round the all all all, all round. Thank you very much. That's Thank you, Adi. Thank you. Uh, Raza Pai, one minute. We go Bashi Bashi Pai Tejan is back on. Bashi Pai, you want to say something? We no, thank you. Session. All the best, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat. Oh, did you want to say something about Charlie or anything today? No. <laughs> Thank you, Bashi Bhai. Okay, well, we're going to pass on to Raza Bhai. He's going to do um, first the Uganda cricket now and then a slide presentation. And then Raza Bhai is going to finish off with a word of thanks to everyone today. And we'll close the meeting thereafter. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your time. Raza Bhai, over to you. Raza Bhai, un unmute yourself, please. Um, give me one second. I'm just going to uh, queue up the uh, then and now uh, presentation. Uh, just uh, bear with me for one second. Okay, thanks, Tanmi. Um, are you able to see my screen at the moment? Yes, we can. Thanks, Sanvi. Okay. And John, you're on as well. Yeah. And you can make yeah. some comments if you wanted to while the slides are being played. This is on a, no, there's no sound to this. Uh, you see, this uh, this is a Uganda team traveling somewhere. I think maybe Zambia. Yeah, no, that's uh, no. Tanzania. Wanakojua. <laughs> this is 1964, 54. Who's this? John, do you know this fellow? Who's that? I have no idea. Yeah. These are later photographs, obviously. Yeah. Premji Patel with John Nagenda. Premji went to visit Uganda that's, in 2011. That's Premji, that's Premji, right? Yeah, Premji. That's Premji, yes. I've got yeah, you, more now you see it. Narottam, Banu, Salauddin, Charlie, Zahid Shah. This is an MCC visit. This is the British Asians when they won 1955, captained by Dilbak Singh. Uh, this is Salauddin in one of his fine sharp stroke makers, one of the best stroke makers in uh, East Africa, probably. 
this is, if you don't see this very clearly, but looks. This is the Kampala Recreation Club team from 1931. Uh, Dr. Uh -huh. Lal Dean is here and uh -huh. a bunch of older people. John Nagenda, Nurdin, Nurdin visiting Uganda. John Nagenda there. And once again, you see Vali Jamal there, Rajini Taylor on the right, and Nurdin. Mm. John Nagenda. Fast bowler, you're a good bowler. Yeah, he was extremely fast. Mm. And here's Sam. Valasimbi. A young looking yeah. Sam. Yeah. Not sure who this guy is, but anyway, he looks like he's about to die. <laughs> this looks like one of the Uganda fast bowlers. John Nagenda? Nagenda. No, that's not Nagenda. Nagenda. No. looked like Malcolm Marshall to me. Uh, <laughs> these are the young, uh, young yeah, uh, cricketers. Younger, younger teams. Uh, yeah. Kenya against Uganda. Mm. Uganda I'm very so richly did quite well in the tournament there. I was I'm sorry to say you Kenyans and Tanzanians, but the Ugandans qualified yes. for the next World Cup in the preliminary rounds. I don't know what happened to Kenya, I don't know what happened to Tanzania. So Uganda cricket is uh, flourishing. Okay. Very good. Yeah, Kenya has really gone down, really. Yep. Thank you, Razabai. That's a very interesting slide. Thank you. Yeah, once the administration does badly, your cricket team suffers, and that's what's happened in Kenya that's, right now. Yeah. I always had a strong team, and I was had high expectations, but with the guys of Chicolo and everybody else, I thought that would be like the uh, leaders and people to follow and inspire them, but it didn't come through. Razabai, yeah. all yours um, to say a word of thanks before we end the meeting. Uh, thank you. Um, Two things that I would like to say. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. yes Thank you. Okay. Two things that I would like to say. Uh, so this is a wonderful program. I'm, I'm sure that uh, if uh, people would, have, many people would have jo joined today, they would have really uh, enjoyed this program. It's one of the best programs that we've had today. Um, RD Patel, <laughs> Kemcho, Tame, RD, Mane, Tame, Suka, Utu. video on Toro, please. We can't see you on the video. Can you switch your video on, please? Yeah, here's that. So, is it okay? Yeah, no, we it's... can't see you. We can't see you on the video. You need to switch the video. Yeah, we can so see him. You. you can hear his voice. <laughs> you can hear the voice. We can't see you on picture. Oh, you can't see me? There he is. I'm here. We can see him. Yeah, now we can now. see you. Yeah. Thank you. So, what I was telling, uh, was saying to Adi, uh, okay. these are very valuable things, Adi. you <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I can do it, but also... Yeah, uh, can assist him, yeah? Uh, yeah. I, will, um, I will do that for RD, yes? Yeah, no please do that for us. And that goes for everybody else, eh? Whoever wants to help us out on these things, uh, please, please uh, feel uh, very free. Bashir Kara, thank you very much uh, for that uh, video that you have done. It's an excellent video. And mm -hmm. uh, we will we will soon be presenting it. it, it. Yeah. And I, I think it will be a, a wonderful uh, thing for people to watch. Uh, Charlie and all that, Charlie, Norman, and everybody else. Now, this is that the, earlier on, that we had sent me a message to say that uh, we have only 15 participants and should we go on? And I said, please, the show has to go on. We cannot abandon our shows. Never mind the number of uh, participants. Uh, it is disappointing, but then we just have to go on with our show. Now, in, so in that regard, then I have something, uh, something, uh, a message uh, that I would like to give it to you all. So Jambo and um, Habari, everybody, uh, I take the pleasure of uh, reviewing three major activities of the infant forum since inception earlier in the year. 
three virtual episodes, one each for East African country were organized. This is the third one. Cricket personality, personalities were at hand to speak about their respective experiences in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda's cricket circles. The events did not attract, as you can see today, the audience hoped for, but this is understandable with so many gatherings and other communal and secular programs are on air simultaneously. This is probably one of the causes, but it doesn't matter. We have introduced newsletter as our official medium of our communication. Two volumes have been published and I hope that you people enjoyed uh, those, uh, uh, the, what, what was presented to you and uh, feedback would be very interesting to see. And um, this will be our method of uh, communication as we go along. And so please, we urge everybody to subscribe. And um, there is, some people think that they have to pay something hard, but that is no, there is no subscription. Uh, you just, uh, it is free of charge. So please try and encourage yourselves and the others to subscribe. And in future, our future, our contact address is contact at eacricketersforum.com. Try and use this uh, uh, for, uh, for future communication. We have a YouTube channel. The first episode was watched by nearly 600 viewers, and the second, just about half of them. We are actively persevering to have website established, provided we feel it necessary, and of interest to the general cricket fraternity in East Africa. Here again, we shall rely heavily on the input by yourself. Thus, with perseverance, cooperation, coordination, goodwill, and your blessings, we intend to forge ahead in coming years to reach our desired goals. As they say, Rome was not built in one day. We remain committed to honor our veterans who have contributed tremendously to mold the history of cricket in East Africa. If we cannot bring them in front of the camera, we shall carry their profiles, obituaries, as the case may be. Your input in this respect is highly desirable. We look forward and eagerly await the patronage of the uh, present day cricketers on our forum. It is them who will eventually write the history of cricket in East Africa. It is a pride for us to know that cricketers of both gender in the three East African countries are performing exemplarily on the domestic and international scenario. May we request cricket association in the three countries to nominate a candidate, male or female, to be focused on our future virtual programs. And we humbly request these prestigious cricket, uh, prestigious cricket governing bodies to assist us in propagating our goals. Having said that, on behalf of the ESCF team members, I am privileged to acknowledge your patronage and look forward to your future participation in your programs, as well as encourage you to share with us your personal experiences of unique cricket games witnessed or participated participated in alongside with hitherto unpublished pictures with appropriate captions. One page profiles and obituaries of cricketers of your choice will be most welcome. This is just what I said to R.D. Patel before and it applies to everybody here. We have Mohammed Pirbai here. He should be reminiscing his uh, cricketing, his own cricketing career. And uh, he also can write us a small, small note. Uh, and, and so, 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 uh, the same uh, case goes with uh, everybody else, Godwi and uh, Mulchand and everybody else, okay? Um, finally, on, on my personal behalf, on a pat on the back for team members who have responded to the call and given their valuable time to formulate the events. If there is one single individual who needs to, and I, I hope that you will echo my, uh, my words that I'm saying now, I'm about to say now. Uh, if there is any one single individual who needs to be recognized for the success of these three events, technologically and administratively, it is undoubtedly Mohammed Tamil Kara, whose untiring hard work has culminated in exemplary <laughs> virtual presentations, as well as the compilation of the newsletters. I hope you are agree with me. Well done, Tanvir. He you. deserves appropriate accolades from us all. I hereby bestow upon him the title of Achiever of the Year 
and I will please ask him to collect the trophy on our behalf. Please, Bashir, uh, Tanvir. Thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate it. And this is the virtual trophy that I'm accepting. Thank you. <laughs> well done, well done. Fantastic hey, job, I Tanvir. have uh, one, uh, uh, just one more paragraph to go. Um, <laughs> and so as we come nearer to the days of festivities, and look forward for the new year. Here is to wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Goodbye, Kwaheri, Aujo, and always remember, Akuna Matata. I uh, will ask now Bharat to officially close the meeting. Thank you very much. Sorry. Somebody wanted to say something before I close? Adi, you want, who wants to say something? Uh, next episode for Tanzanian cricket. Can you facilitate uh, Mr. C.D. Patel, the elder brother of R.D. Patel? He was a great all-rounder, which I think has not been mentioned. I will he, reply to that, he, Bharat. He, I think he's here enough. Remember, we did mention C.D. Patel a couple of times, but we will make well, a point of doing that. Yeah, of course, well, we will do on the next show. Bharat, uh, I will be able to answer that uh, because, you see, we, uh, we cannot... Uh, because they're not here with us anymore. We cannot no. present them on the show, right? Unless yeah. if somebody like, the, we'll see in the in future what happens. But if you if you have seen that in our um, our newsletter, we have covered one uh, personality, Tanzanian cricketer, uh, Shri Premji by Patel, uh, Wagela, and his whole okay. obituary has been given, right? So mm. we, we have in mind, we have C.D. Patel, we, we have De Kunha, we have Lawrence Fernandez, and there are so many people so that, many. that we have. Uh, we will all gradually, gradually uh, 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 put them on our, our newsletter. But again, I keep on repeating this. If you people are not going to help us, then you know we, 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 we cannot do everything. Especially when it is, as far as it, uh, Uganda is concerned, and please, uh, John, note this, as far as um, Uganda is concerned. We don't have much information. So it will be up to you to, to feed us with information. And same thing with, uh, with Kenya also, we don't have. We have a lot of um, uh, studies to, to be done for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Tanzanians. But unfortunately for uh, Ugandans and uh, Kenyans, we don't have much. So please help us out, whoever can, whoever can help. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Before I wind up, there's one guest we haven't had a chance to speak. He was struggling to come on and off. So, uh, Honorable Justice by Gail, do you want to say a couple of things? Uh, put the video no, on, please. No, uh, hi, I'm Dr. Gail. I'm from Dinja. I graduated in 1965. I'm a doctor in California, USA, but I'm not a cricket player, but I'm a great fan of cricket. And I've enjoyed every minute of today's presentation and especially exactly. Charlie D'Souza, I, I have enjoyed. I So I want to thank all of you for doing what you're doing. It's a really a, a great connection with our past. And I want to congratulate all of you. Wherever I can help you, I'm here for you. I'm a, I'm a cricket fan, not a cricket player. Thank, thank you, you. Jaspeep, sir. It's very nice of you to take time and join us. And always a pleasure to have you on board. Rajabai, before we close up, I just want to echo what you said, uh, what, what a wonderful job he's been doing for us over the last nine months or so. We couldn't have, couldn't have done this forum or we couldn't be where we are without Tanvir. He, he's a real hero in the background. Uh, does all the technical sites, the newsletters, the slides, uh, YouTube, the amount <coughs> of uh, pressure on him and he does with a smiley face. We really appreciate Tanvir, you're doing a wonderful, wonderful job and keep it up. Thank you very much indeed. On behalf of everyone, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Tanvir. Thank you, Tanvir. And once again, finally, thank you all for your time and thank you all for your pleasure and thanks for bearing with us today. Sorry, we're running a bit late. We started a bit late and we look forward to seeing you next year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Take care. Stay safe. And thank you. Thank you. And your families. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Take Bye, care. everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, John. Take care. Bye, Bye Charlie. Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Good Thank time. You, Thanks for your time. All right, Bharat. Thank you.